Let's see what it takes to do web UI testing with OpenTest. This tutorial assumes that we are starting from scratch. So first thing first, we need to install OpenTest by typing npm install OpenTest-G. This installation can take a couple of minutes depending on your network connection and the machine that you are installing on. Now that we have OpenTest installed properly, let's continue with the rest of our setup. Now one thing I should have told you in the beginning is, for, in order for all this to work, is you need to make sure you have uh, Node.js installed on your machine and also the Java runtime version 8 or later. Now in this high level architecture diagram you can see these two dark blue boxes in here. Those are the two main components of OpenTest, the server and the actor. Uh, and they both require configuration files in order to work properly. There are, there are a couple of ways to create those configuration files, but the easiest way to do it is to use the quick start command that OpenTest provides. So let's do that right now. So let's uh, change directory into the documents folder and in here let's create a directory OpenTest just to stay organized. And let's cd into that directory and now I can run the quick start command so let's run open test quick start and this command creates three directories for me if I do a dir I can see it created those three directories actor one server and test repo all right so now uh, what we want to do here is web UI testing. So yeah, let's, let's look at those directories a little bit before we do anything else. So if I go into actor one, I see that the only thing in here is a configuration file that looks, yeah, let's open it with VS code. So that configuration file looks like that. We have a couple of things in here, but the most important are the actor type, then the sync server URL. Sync server is the open test server, the same thing. So here we are telling the test actor where is the server that it is going to work with. And then there are a couple of other, uh, there are a couple of sections in here depending on what type of testing you're doing, you're going to have to fill some of those parameters. In our case, we are doing web UI testing, so we only care about the Selenium uh, section. Uh, I won't go through all of the things you can do in here, but the important things for us right now, uh, we can actually delete this because the window, uh, browser window is getting maximized anyway. So the important thing for us is this parameter, Chrome driver exe path. This has to point to the Chrome driver, Chrome web driver executable on my machine. And right now we don't, I don't have it. I need to download it. So let's first go into Chrome and let's type Chrome web driver. And the first link we get here in the results is the one we need. And uh, let's go and download the latest Chrome driver, Chrome web driver release. I'll download the one for my operating system. If you're on a different operating system, of course, you need to download the one for you. So I'll download this and let's go to the folder. Let's unzip this um, into the current directory. And now I have the Chrome driver executable in here. All right, so the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this path to the driver executable and I'm going to use it instead of this one here. And the one thing you need to be careful with is that 
uh, this configuration file is a YAML file as you can see here and the YAML uh, needs you to to double down to escape your back uh, to your your backslashes uh, alternatively you can just use four slashes which is I normally like to do and let's save so now that I save this parameter we are ready to start testing this is all you need to do right good uh, the other things that the quick start command created for us uh, is a configuration file for the server for the open test server and a test repository just a sample test repository um, with some tests here if you go into the tests directory you can see there are some subdirectories in there and for us we are uh, we only need those two web tests all right so let's uh, let's now start the open test server so i'm in the open test directory and in order to start the open test server i'm going to just type open test server and then i need to type the path to the working directory for my server which is also called server if i type a relative path uh, that's enough for for open test to figure out where the directory is Now the open test server is starting and is creating some some files on my local system here. If you look into the server directory, you'll see it's creating a directory for the database and now we're ready to go. So if I type local host 3000, I can actually connect to the web UI exposed by the open test server and there's not much to see here yet so let's go ahead with the next step the next step is to run the open test actor so i'll open a new command prompt i'll go ahead and change directory into the same open test directory and i'll type open test actor this time and the name of the directory of the working directory for my actor which is actor one this is the directory that contains the configuration file, as you remember. Now the open test actor is starting. And now we're ready to go. So if I refresh the UI here, I can see that the open test server is able to see the, the test actor. And I can start my first test session. To do that, let's go to the session menu. Let's go to the create test session and now we can pick a number of tests that we want to run as part of this session and let's pick these two on the bottom here which are in the web directory and let's also give a name to this test session let's call it github tests and let's click on create session now as we can see the test session started and we can see that this actor uh, was the one allocated to execute it we can see the browser window here let's click on it to see what it's doing it navigated to github.com now it's going to type react into this box and click on the Facebook react link uh, and this was the first test um, if I refresh here I can see some some numbers like uh, I can see this session executed a total of two tests you see the second one just started in the background um, and of those two tests one of them was completed and uh, one of them passed so the second test just finished executing and now the third test is starting now if you're wondering why uh, I have three tests in here uh, when I just uh, selected two of them in the create test session it's because this second test is a data driven test and it actually executes twice and I won't go into uh, detail uh, to, to explain what that means right now but if I refresh here now I can see that the test session is completed and it passed uh, and if I uh, look uh, at the numbers I can see that uh, I had a total of three tests and three of them uh, are completed and three of them passed this is of course the ideal situation and this is all it takes to run web UI tests with open test